Okay, in this episode, we are going to investigate calculus and all of its wonder. And we are going to do this algebraically, then we're going to look at graphically, and then we're going to practice more notation. Actually, we'll practice notation throughout. So, <clears throat> back to Sarah Fisher Fund. I've got a Sarah Fisher Fund here. It is s of x is in dollars, x is in days, and the function itself is negative 15x to the fourth plus 510x cubed minus 4,155x squared plus 8,280. And the first expression I have to find here is S11. So if I throw the function in my calculator, S11 is going to give me 47520. So this means on day 11, I have... $47,520. So Sarah Fisher Fund, doing well. The next expression I find is S prime of 11. And again, I'm going to throw the function into my calculator, find the derivative on the 11th day, and that is $22,139.99. So on day 11, I am earning my Sarah Fisher Fund is earning, it is increasing by $22,140 that day, per day. So day 11, I've got 47 grand and I am increasing by 22 grand. So by day 12, I'm gonna be super stoked and I should be at, <clears throat> you know, about $69,000. So things are going extremely well on day 11. Now I just want to throw out some more notation in practice here. The ds dx at x equals 2. I could read this in two ways. This is asking for the rate of change of s of x when x equals 2. In other words, this is asking for the slope of the tangent line of s of x when x equals 2. So just be familiar with those two phrases. They all tie into ds dx at x equals 2. You know, I could write this as s prime of 2. All of this notation, be aware of all of this. Think about derivatives. ds dx is a derivative. s prime of x, s prime of 2, the derivative at x equals 2. All of this are rates of change. They're all equivalent to that slope of the tangent line, that instantaneous rate of change at that particular x value. So when I go to my calculator, ds dx at x equals 2 is some bad news. It's about negative $2,700 per day. So, Luckily, day 11 looks better, but right now, if I'm living in day two, Sarah Fisher Fund is not doing well. I am losing $27,000 a day, approximately. All right, good practice there algebraically. <clears throat> now let's move graphically. We've got f prime of x on a closed interval from zero to 10. So this is the graph of the derivative. So according to this, I'm going to say f prime of x is positive for all 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 9 because my derivative, this graph of the derivative, is all above the x-axis. So f prime of x is positive over this interval. So therefore, f of x is increasing. Awesome. Now, let's go a step further. f prime of x, the graph of this derivative, this function itself, is below the x-axis. It's negative from 9 to 10. And if my derivative is negative, that means my function is decreasing. OK, awesome. So this is the derivative. This is going to tell me how f of x is behaving. The derivative tells me how f of x is behaving. Now, let's talk about that derivative. f prime of x is decreasing from 0 to 2. And 
f prime of x is decreasing, let's call this 5 to 10. So decreasing, decreasing. So when f prime of x is decreasing, that means my consecutive slopes of tangent lines are going down. They are decreasing. And if my consecutive slopes are decreasing, that means f of x is concave down. Boom. Now on those parts where f of x is, or f prime of x is increasing, when f prime of x is increasing, that means my consecutive slopes are increasing. And we talked about if my consecutive slopes are increasing, that's the definition of concave up. So f of x is concave up. So I've got this little interval here from let's say two to five, I'm concave up. Everywhere else I'm concave down. So let's draw that. So now I'm gonna draw my f double prime of x. So let's switch gears a little bit, kind of. I'm gonna do f double prime of x in blue. So f prime is decreasing, so f of x, actually, hold on, pause. Let's make our zeros. So two and five are our zeros. I'm decreasing, so therefore the second derivative will be negative. Increasing, second derivative positive, and then decreasing again, second derivative negative. So this function here, the blue graph is my f double prime, the black graph is my f prime. So now finally, let's do this last tie-in. Oh, Romilda's barking. So now what I'm gonna do is tie everything together and make a sketch of the function f of x. So it's increasing from zero to nine, decreasing from nine to 10, and I have to be concave up from two to five, concave down everywhere else. So it looks like my function, I'm gonna just have it start right about here, increasing concave down, increasing concave up, so increasing concave down, increasing concave up, once I hit five, I gotta go back to down, but I'm still increasing because my der first derivative is positive. So keep increasing until I hit that nine. I go from increasing to decreasing. And then I stop when I hit x equals 10. Increasing concave down, increasing concave up from two to five. After five, right around here, we see the change in concavity. It goes from up back to down. Boom, there's my graph of f of x.